So I thought I would show you a little bit about the creation of the stash. The stash is my marvelous collection of tissues and papers that I have created. A lot of them are in fact byproducts of other prints, uh, what might be considered to somebody else's being the waste sheets, but um, I find them very, very useful in collage and I'm so glad that I've preserved them after all of this time. So I'm working today on my great big jelly plate simply because it's nice and straightforward. It's 16 by 20. I've got areas marked off on it if I were only wanting to do an 8 by 10 or a 10 by 14, which were other projects. I could use a little wee spot if I only wanted to do that. Uh, but today I want to make some fairly large scale uh, tissue papers. Now over on this side, I've got all my paints. I primarily use the uh, golden open paints. What I find with these is that I get at least four prints from each time that I roll up the plate, and I'll describe that more um, in a moment. I also do use some Amsterdam acrylics and some regular acrylics, uh, but for different purposes, not what I want to do today. I do have some colors that I don't have available in my open supply. But what I will do when I do, when I use them, is I will add a little bit of the golden open gel or the uh, golden open acrylic medium. And, and that, either of those, will help delay the drying time and get me the transparency and uh, that I'm looking for in these prints. I've got a spray bottle, I've got paper towels, I've got my various rulers. I've got some botanical pieces here. I was actually able to find in February in Kelowna, British Columbia, some pieces of still pliable vegetation, which I was so delighted to find. I've also got uh, corrugated cardboard uh, pieces for texture. I've got uh, different geometric shapes. I've got some rubber band things. I've got all kinds of stuff. I also have some stencils that I'm probably going to use today. These are ones that I've made um, myself. I've come up with a design on the computer. I have then sent them to my Cricut cutter and cut them out on uh, Duralar. And Duralar, I find, is very durable. I can use them over and over and over again. So I've got some stencils like that that I'll be using. Okay, so um, I always have to think about color scheme when I'm getting ready to do this and what have I already got versus what do I need? So there's a, a few things that I'm doing right now. I'm doing a project that's more about the greeny tones, which is a bit of a departure. I'm quite a lot about the neutrals. So I'm going to pick out a few colors to work with. Today I'm going to work with... Um, I'll have di dioxys and purple available to be used or not to be used. I've got uh, the sap green. I've got an ultramarine blue, which is in harmony with what I'm working with right now. And I think I'm also going to pull out a little bit of Indian yellow, maybe to play with that. And then, of course, I've got my jar of transparent red iron oxide. Well, I'm putting the paint onto the gel plate I've got one or two methods and a lot of it just depends on how I want the colors to be on the plate. So if I'm not that picky um, I will just go ahead and squeeze some of the colors out. So just you know not necessarily putting everything everywhere uh, maybe areas in this case which will have some greens um, Maybe some bluish bits, bluer bits. I'm going to leave the purple out of this one. Then I'll stick some Indian yellow up here. It gets a little bit of a brighter green. So when I do it that way, then I'm I pick a brayer which will probably work. If I'm got lots of little bits, I'll use maybe a smaller brayer. If I've got uh, bigger areas, I can use a bigger brayer. Um, this nice thing about having multiple sizes. And rolling out the, the paint is a trick on its own. You want to let the brayer spin. You don't want to just have it just going back and forth and back and forth. 
although that's useful too in different cases. Different techniques will get you different things. Now this is quite a lot of paint on this plate. Um, sometimes I'll put quite a lot on, some of, sometimes I will put less on. Not too worried about blending it really thoroughly. I don't mind the blobs. A lot of these papers that I'm creating, I will just be using pieces of, strips of, rectangles of, in different spots. Okay, that's probably a good place to start. Last fall, when there wasn't much left, I got uh, some of this and soaked it for a couple of days and then flattened it. And uh, I'm thinking that this could provide me with a really nice kind of base. Botanicals tend to be a little lumpy. And that's just kind of the way it goes. Sometimes it is better to uh, flatten them out before you use them. And that one's going to be a problem child. I'll try it anyway. Um, and I have a bit of, I don't know, I have some grassy pieces that I might use to fill this corner up here a bit. You know, you do it. You do what you can for for the whole thing. Sometimes I'll try different methods. I've got quite a lot of time. I can work with this because this is golden open. This is not going to uh, become a problem with drying too fast. I've got kind of as much time as I want. This is a piece of corrugated cardboard that came <laughs> actually with uh, some wine. This two pieces together splits up a bag of wine quite nicely. Um, and I took out the top layer of, of the paper the, and that leaves a really interesting design in here. And what I'll do sometimes when I'm not maybe going to, to go for a composition on its own but just useful bits is I will uh, stamp into it. So I'll just press, press this down and I'll get a, it, an impression. The corrugated cardboard will lift off a bit of the paint and it will leave its impression in the paint. So oh, you can actually see that quite easily on there. Now the tissue I use, being in North America, I don't have access, easy access to the wet strength tissue from Carnival. This is the Spectra Art Tissue. And it's a, a heavier strength than that from the dollar store. Um, and I find it works really, really well. So the print that I'm going to pull first is going to be what I call a negative print. So this print will leave as voids all of the plant material that's on there. So if I just get this spread out. And I'm just going to use another roller, clean roller, to um, make a good impression. I could also put a sheet of paper over top of it and then rub it with my hands. That works too. Uh, if I try to rub it directly, I'm going to get a lot of paint on my hands because there's so much paint right now on the plate that it will bleed through quite a bit. And, you know, that's not a the end of the world thing. It's acrylic, it washes off, but yeah, I just there you can see you can see what it's going to look like even before we pull up the print. There we go. Now this tissue is uh, strong enough that I don't have to worry too much about it falling apart. So this is going to be what I would call, and you'll see in a later segment, uh, a dark negative. So it's got a lot of paint on it, it's a lot of color, 
but there will be sections of this that I will maybe cut out circles or rectangles or whatever, which could be quite um, interesting. So these colors are actually pretty strong. And so they will give me more than one of these. I will actually end up probably taking, oh, maybe even, I would at least expect to get two negatives. Um, a dark negative and a light negative. But in this case, because of the strength of the colors involved, they're pretty, pretty strong. And I did put it on quite thickly. So I would, this will be a less intense negative than the one that I just did, but it will still be pretty, pretty strong in color and in uh, value. Push in there with the fingers, get into the little spaces. See how strong that one is. So not as dark as the previous one, but still got some very interesting colors. You actually some of the colors are a little bit more intense in this one. Some of the blues are showing up more, some of the yellows. So I'm getting further down into the paint on the plate. What I often will do with these is I will put them aside and overprint them with another pattern. And sometimes that can produce very interesting results. A lot of people think that golden open acrylic is so expensive, but you know, it's the same price for a bottle, uh, or a, pardon me, a tube of the open acrylic as it is uh, regular open, or pardon me, regular golden acrylic. Um, and this stuff just goes so far. If I'm using the Amsterdam acrylics, I get one negative and one positive, which we haven't even gotten to the positives yet, so don't worry about that. That's coming up. Whereas with the Golden Opens, I will get at least two of each and quite often more multiples, such as the one that we're doing right now. And um, I'll explain that a little bit more in a moment. So this is the third negative that we've pulled. You see it's starting to get quite light. You know, sometimes I really like these ones. Uh, you can see quite a lot of the stamping that I did in there. Some of the colors are starting to poke up. A lot of these little things in the background kind of suggest other vegetation, and I take advantage of that when I'm creating my mixed media pieces. That's beautiful. And one more. Some of the ones that are really, really faint are in fact some of the ones that I find the most interesting. And remember, this is none of these are an end product. They're all just going into the stash and hopefully get to take part in a mixed media piece down the road. Some of the tissues and papers that I printed up and I thought, oh, I'll never use that. That's horrible. <laughs> and then, you know, six months later, I'm looking at it going, ooh, that's perfect for this little corner. So keep everything, keep it organized, and you'll be able to take advantage of it down the road. Oh yes, I am enjoying this. This is, this is very nice. It's quite faint. It could become really interesting if I cross print it with another faint one later on. So I'm just going to set that aside and uh, show you the next phase. Now with the open acrylic, how many times I have to do that depends on two things. One is how much paint did I put on in the first place 
And the second is, uh, how clean do I want the background to be? There will be a little bit of green staining in the background of this print, um, but I think it's I think it's going to be okay. So th at this point, I'm going to lift uh, the botanicals. Yep. Sometimes we lose a leaf, especially if it's middle of winter already, but can't be helped. Some of these grasses and uh, twigs I have been using for quite a long time. Some of them, the ones without the leaves, tend to, to give me multiple prints. Um, and I've got a little problem going on here with my, with my twig. I've got some bits that fell off of it. Okay, so this is going to be uh, the positives now. This is going to be where the plant matter actually protected the ink from being removed earlier. I'm trying to get this down flat, but you know, sometimes the crinkles aren't a bad thing. There we go. You can see that the color's coming through on this pretty directly. And uh, these could form like a little bit of a background or perhaps uh, lead up to a center of interest in my mixed media work. I always like to have a bunch of these around. You know, I really don't have much in the way of, of greens. So that's one of the th reasons why I'm down here today. Now this is what I would call a dark positive. It's got quite a lot of paint, quite a lot of color. Uh, so, you know, different purposes. And I should be able to get at least one more out of this. Um, and this would be a, a, what I would call a light positive. So again, it's still a, the branches and the, the leaves as opposed to the background, which were the negatives. There we go. Oh yeah. Greens and yellows are so deceptive because they just keep printing and printing and printing. So this is lovely. This is a lighter positive, but I think there's still more ink on there to pull off. It doesn't look like it. It looks like it's all crud. But some of the ones that interest me the most are ones that I didn't really think there was anything there, but I wanted to clean the plate off to change colors. So I put a tissue down and what came up was just beautiful. So we'll give this one more, one more go. <laughs> oh yeah. So this is very faint, but you know, uh, I might do a second faint one on top of it. Or, or on the other side of it. Uh, or I may just find interesting little bits out of this that I'm going to want to, to use directly. And now I've got to clean all this stuff off the plate. So I've cleaned off the plate and done another roll up. So I'm going to use um, some of the same botanicals, some different ones. This I'm hoping will give me a a reasonably interesting image. It's just baby's breath. I haven't flattened it though, so it may create some issues, but we'll see what happens. I've used a little less paint this time, uh, just in terms of giving me something a little different. <clears throat> And I think I'm going to incorporate a few little geometric pieces too. I have these pieces that I have used for different prints for different purposes. They add a geometric element that 
will come out in the final print. I'm not being overly careful about where I'm putting them. I just want to give this a, a shot. I know I'll be able to use the tissues for something. Oops. I guess this one wants to be in here too. Okay, I'll just tuck it under there. Okay. So this is the same as the last go. Um, it's always hard the first one trying to push down all of this stuff. Sometimes I get massive wrinkles in my tissues and you know, I don't really care. Sometimes I find it adds to the interest in the end. Oh, that's quite interesting. With the uh, botanicals, because they were moving around a bit, I got little bits of double images on there. Um, so that's kind of, I don't know, I find that quite interesting. And I like that set of colors on there as well. One thing that happens when you're doing this is you run out of places to paint, to put your prints that are drying. And with the Golden Open, that takes quite a while. Some of the heavy ones, the, the, especially that first negative print that has quite a lot of paint on it, that can take quite a while to dry. I like to really pick up the little negative spaces in these things if I can, if there's something there to be offered. But you get what you get. In the summer, I take a lot of uh, weeds. I go to the dog park, there's weeds all over the place. Or alfalfa plants, I really like those. And uh, I'll print those, and they give me all kinds of interesting images. But this time of the year, which is February, you take what you can get. There. So this is negative print number two. Oh, I'm liking that combination with the purple in there. Now I'm going to take uh, this one, which was negative print number three from the first one, and I'm going to um, overprint it, so I'm going to print, print on top of it. And with the different colors, the color schemes I think are compatible enough, but it should give me some interesting voids that stay white, it should give me some interesting bits. Okay. Now, <laughs> starting to get a little sticky. When you have a, a already have a print on the tissue, uh, especially if it wasn't quite dry yet, which unfortunately this was the case in this one, it can get a little sticky. I would normally try to leave the first print to dry overnight before overprinting it. Oh, that's some interesting stuff there for sure. This to me makes it a little bit more interesting. And I might take out like a chunk or a circle or some various things. Uh, again, these are just fodder. These are just uh, tissues that I'm going to be putting in my stash. Try to soak up any excess paint that hasn't already been gotten rid of. I may have made, and over the years I've made a few darker positives where I haven't taken a lot of the material off, a lot of the paint off in the background. And I'm finding those are a little difficult to collage with. So I tend to clean it up a little bit more with the extra tissue. Uh, 
before pulling the positives. Oh yeah. That's very, very light and delicate. Okay, so I'm going to lift the stencils. I won't get much of this coming through because it wiggled around so much when I was uh, doing the negatives. But I think this one, whoops, <laughs> there goes my baby's breath. <laughs> oh, what a mess. This will take me a while to clean up. <clears throat> and I'll take off the circles. They often leave quite an interesting mark. Depends on what's happened to their, them in their past life. Um, now, if I leave this dirty stuff on here, it's actually going to give me voids, which uh, I'm going to try that. And I'm not thinking I'm going to be able to clean that up in any short amount of time either. But I should get some material that's got some geometrics in it, as well as a little bit of other stuff. And this should be worthwhile. If you look in here, this is some really nice little delicate imagery, just perfect for in the background of, of one of my new pieces. And I've got a bit stronger geometric elements, which will be fine too. So I have this piece with almost nothing on it in terms of marks. I'm just going to use it to pick up what's left. It might, maybe faint plus faint will give me something interesting. Or I've just saved myself another tissue, who knows. Oh yeah. Whoops. Sometimes that happens when things get dried up and sticky. <clears throat> there. That is an improvement on that tissue. The little bits of random of the better green goes really well with a bit of violet and the uh, transparent red iron oxide. So even with a little bit of tear there, that's going to be a useful tissue. And once again, the big clean off. Okay. <clears throat> The baby's breath is going in the garbage. Too much work to take that off the plate. Um, but these, this other one that did shed all over my plate the first time, but I will forgive it and hope that most of it is now gone. Um, I'm going to use that one over here. And... I'd like to get a little bit more mileage out of these leaves. So I'll put those over here.
Okay, so hopefully I haven't disrupted stuff too much. So those cardboard stamps made uh, an interesting pattern behind those negative shapes. So uh, that's going to be a bit interesting. And I'm going to try pulling uh, this on this one. See what kind of interesting things happen with that. A little bit wet. Again, in a normal world, I would wait till tomorrow to do these, this second layer. But frankly, I doubt if those leaves will survive the night. So I know the sticks will. The sticks will be fine. But the leaves probably won't. Sometimes I'll wash the leaves off and then uh, stick them in a little pot of water and try to get some more mileage out of them. That works sometimes, more in the summer when they're a little bit more resilient than these poor things. And it's a little sticky. I've got the very strong green patterns from the first printing, but now I've picked up some nice blue violets in some of the negative spaces. Uh, so yeah, good, good shot. I'm not going to give this an overall rub, I'm just going to give it a rub where I think I need to get some of that extra purple off of the background. I think that's quite interesting. Okay, we'll lift this up and then do some positives. This is why I start whoops, with so much paint to begin with, because sometimes I want a really good, strong, positive image. And I think that would qualify as being a strong image. So a chunk of this could easily make its way into one of my collages. <laughs> 